Hi guys! In this video, you will learn how to build a real-time data processing pipeline for financial news. That is going to ingest in real-time financial text from the Alpaca News API. It's going to transform it into vector embeddings using ByteWorks. And it's going to save them in a vector DB, which is going to be Quadrant. Let's get to it. So let's first head to the repository, hands-on LLM. So you can have, you see the URL right here. You get, go to code, then you copy. And you go to your terminal, and then I'm going to sit into source uh, live sessions, and then I'm going to git clone it. Aha, uh -huh, it says I, al I already have it, so I'm just going to sit into it and then do a git pull. Super, and then I'm going to open with Visual Studio Code. We're going to go to the modules streaming pipeline right here, and then there's a readme where you first see the list of dependencies that is, the tools that you need to run the streaming pipeline on your end, Python 3.0. Then poetry, uh, I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, Make, which is standard, if you have Linux or Mac, I'm not sure in Windows, check that. And then the AWS CLI. So, as usual, make install. So I'm going to head to the make file, which I'm going to open to the side. Here, make install basically installs all the dependencies for this project inside the virtual environment. So I'm there in streaming pipeline. I'm going to run make install. Super, everything is installed. If you scroll down, there's this .m file. So you run this command, copy, and you create your M file, and then you will see it right here. In this file, you need to paste a few secrets to run this whole thing. We're going to use two services, which are Alpaca to fetch a financial news in real time. And for that, you need an API key and an API secret. And then Quadrant. Quadrant is going to be our serverless vector DB. So in order to use these services, you need to get the credentials key. So let's go to Alpaca. And there you need to create an account for free. You don't need to pay anything. So you just go to your account here in home. And here on the right, you will see view API keys. So if you click here and you regenerate, you will, you will be able to see a new key, which I'm copying it here and I'm pasting it in my M file. So alpaca key, this one, and then secret, which obviously I'm showing mine here, but this is a value that you should not share. Super. So Alpaca is set up in terms of credentials. Now I'm going to check Quadrant. So for Quadrant, I'm going to go to Quadrant. Quadrant is an open source vector DB, which has also a serverless platform. A vector database is a scalable way to index and store your data embeddings. So later on, you can do semantic similarity search to find similar embeddings between a query embedding and the embeddings from your vector database using distance metrics such as cosine similarity. Super, so let's create a cluster. You can create it for free right here. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to write it. Um, I'm going to write Alpaca Financial News. Super, then I'm going to generate an API key. So I click Get API Key. And this is the value that I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to immediately add it to my .m file under API key right here. Then I go back to Quadrant Then I continue. So this is the URL of my cluster, so I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to add it here under Quadrant URL. Super. To double check that my cluster is up and running, I'm going to go to the terminal and then I'm going to copy this cool command. Super, so I get a positive response. I see that the system is up and running. Super, so we have our quadrant um, cluster up and running. So I'm going to go back to the code. So we have the two services that we need, Alpaca and Quadrant. Now we're going to start running things. The first one is make run real time. What this does is it runs uh, the real time financial news pipeline locally. So let's go to the make file to see what's happening here behind the scenes. So run real time. Let me open it here on the left and then expand a bit. It's basically running this Python script. It's calling ByteWatts. ByteWatts is a Python library. Again, built with Rust, but with native Python bindings. So you define your business logic, your steps in Python, but you leverage the efficiency of Rust. So with ByteWatts run, we basically need to provide the path of a function that generates a so-called data flow. Data flow in ByteWatts is a, is a sequence of steps that define our transformation from input collection, in this case, from a WebSocket, from Alpaca, to the final destination, in this case, Quadrant Vector DB. 
So in between, there are a bunch of steps, processing steps, that let us transform raw text that we get from Alpaca into vector embeddings that we save in our vector DB. So if you go to Tools Run Real Time Build Flow, which I'm doing right now, Run Real Time Build Flow, this is the function that essentially returns a data flow. This is the object, the byte what object. What this function does, it initializes logging, so this is just a convenient wrapper, but this is the key function, flow builder. I'm going to click on that. This is the function that constructs our data flow using ByteWorks. So what are the steps? The first one is the input. So the input is built with this function. Let's click on that. Build input is the function that constructs the input step in our data flow. And if you scroll down, you will see that it defines two separate cases, whether it's batch or not. But what does this mean, Paul? Alpaca Batch leverages Alpaca's RESTful API to ingest historical data into the Cadron vector DB. And Alpaca Stream leverages Alpaca's streaming API to listen to data 24-7 and ingest data in real time. Super, so I'm going to go back to the data flow. The next step is a flat map. So you see flat maps and maps. What is the difference, Paul? So imagine you have a list in a bypex flow. Both flat map and map will apply a function on all the elements of this list. But map will send this list down the bytex flow, while flat map will emit every element from the list individually, basically eliminating the list structure down the flow. Super, so we define a flat map to parse the incoming messages. So news articles is defined right here as a Pydantic class. So this is a very nice way to define the structure of our data using uh, Pydantic classes. So let me go back to the data flow and continue scrolling. Basically, this is a step where we transform this article, which contains raw data, into a document. So what is that? So a document contains basic information that we need to push our data to Quadrant. So it has an ID. It has some metadata, which is important. Vector embeddings alone are not that useful. You also need to embed them with metadata, for example, timestamps. Then the text, the raw text. So you can also see when you run a query against your vector DB if what you get makes sense. And then the chunks and the embeddings. What are these chunks? To compute embeddings, we will use a language model that has a fixed input size. We cannot embed arbitrarily large text. So what we do is we chunk based on the input size of the model that we use. This is what these chunks means. And then for every chunk, we compute embeddings. So essentially, we represent raw text by a collection of vector embeddings, not just one, but many. And this is what we push to Quadrant DB. So this is what we are representing right here with these fields. So if you go back to the flow, there are these two steps. There is the compute chunks, and then there's the compute embeddings. So to compute embeddings behind the scenes, what we're using is a model, right? This is the embedding model that we use. What model are we using in this case? If you go to the constants, you will see what's the embedding model ID. So we're using an open source model from Hugging Face, actually from Sentence Transformers, which is a very standard model to use, but feel free to experiment with others. This is actually a hyperparameter that you can play with in order to improve the performance of the whole system. We finally need to, to write the output to the vector DB, and this is what we do with the build output function here. The build output returns a data flow step that can either be saved to our serverless Quadrant DB or to a local instance that we're running with Docker. The key advantage of using Quadron Cloud is that you can directly start focusing on your application or product instead of wasting valuable resources on setting up your infrastructure and Quadrant itself, which can be a very time-consuming process. This one here is the, the one that matters. And here you can see what vector output does. This standard way to build outputs on Bytewax, you need to define two things. First, you need to define what is called a source. In this case, a collection in Quadrant. And then, a, if you scroll up, a dynamic output, which basically uses the source and makes sure the data is written at least once. Super, so that's it. This is how the whole data flow is defined. Let's run it. Make run real time. Super, so you can see the pipeline is running. It connected to Alpaca API. 
And as soon as data uh, arrives through our WebSocket, it's going to be processed and then sent to Quadrant. So, Paul, what are our options in terms of deployment? There are two main ways to deploy a Byte2x flow to the cloud. The first one is using Byte2x, WAXCTL tool, which allows you to quickly and easily deploy any flow to the cloud. But if you want to tap into more customizable ways, you can use AWS CLI, which you use in this course, to create an EC2 instance and deploy a Docker image to it. But for more scalable and production-ready ways, you should use AWS CDK or Terraform to create your infrastructure and GitHub Actions to deploy the Docker image to this infrastructure. Feel free to choose the one that gives you the nice trade-off uh, between uh, flexibility and performance. And then finally, as usually, it's great to integrate. So all the deployment of new code needs to go through testing and then automatic deployment. So this is what we have in this GitHub action. So if you go to .github here, you will find continuous integration and continuous deployment uh, pipelines to make sure that the latest changes of our streaming pipeline are tested and then deployed in production. So that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. And please don't forget to give us a star on GitHub. See you soon.